There are three ways in which API endpoint accept parameters. First in the query string, after the question mark, or in the JSON body, or in the path parameter. In this video, we will look what will happen if the server is not validating those inputs that is being provided in the URL path parameter of an API endpoint. So this is basically about server-side parameter pollution in REST APIs. It's a very interesting scenario, but if you don't know about server-side parameter pollution, I'll recommend you watching the previous video of this playlist first and then move on with this one. But if you're pretty much confident, keep watching. In this video, we are going to talk about path parameter, how they work, how they can be exploited, and how it can lead to server-side parameter pollution. So basically, when a client makes a request to an API endpoint with the path parameters, the server backend is responsible for extracting and processing those parameters. So this is how it happens. The first step is parsing the URL path. So the server routing mechanism parses the URL path to determine which endpoint is being targeted and extracts any path parameter in the request. Second step is parameter extraction. Backend extracts the values of those path parameters from the URL path and makes it available for the server side code. Third step is parameter validation. After extracting the path parameter, the backend may perform validation to ensure that the provided parameter values meet certain criteria. Now, this step is important because if the server is not doing this step properly, it can lead to problems. And we will look at that scenario soon. And the first step is handling the request and then generating the response. So after taking those parameters, it may query a database, perform some business logic, extract the resource and give it back to the client in the JSON or XML format. Okay, now that you know, how path parameter works in steps. Let's have a look at this JavaScript code to understand how the backend process API path parameter. So obviously the backend can use any programming language. In this case, for example, it's using JavaScript. So this is the path, the endpoint, which contains a particular ID over here and this code is going to extract the value of the path parameter and then return it in the JSON format. So for example, this is a products object and it has three products, one, two, and three with name and price. Now let's say the product ID is three. It will fetch the product ID with three and give the response in JSON format to the client. So this is how it basically works simple. Now you need to know what is path normalization. So path normalization refers to the process of simplifying the structure of the URL paths. And in this case of API endpoints, this will make the API endpoints less redundant and remove duplicate elements. So what do I mean by that? Let's have a look at this example. For example, if this is the original path API user profile ID equals 123 and token equals whatever, this is the normalized path. So it's going to remove those parameters and normalize it like this. And if the API endpoint, let's say is in capital letters, it will convert it to small letters or in a standard format. This one is an interesting case, figuring out relative locations. If this is the original path, for example, dot dot slash post, the server will normalize the path to this. So this scenario can happen during path traversal attacks. For example, if the attacker is trying to inject some special characters like these, the server will normalize it and make it like this so the backend doesn't process it. Also, it ignores unnecessary details. For example, in this case, there is language equals English and this is a normalized path where there is no parameter of that language. So this is how path normalization work. To understand this scenario better, let's have a look at this lab from Vodsugar. 
So basically there is a feature on which you can click for forget password and it will send you a link if the email or if the username exists. For example, if I type username Weiner, it says the product username does not exist. But if I do the same for administrator, it says check your emails because this username exists. So I have a couple of requests here because I already captured this. Anyways, so let's just send this to repeater. And this is the original request looks like. Forget password endpoint and there we have this username parameter. Send this request and we get this 200 OK response. To test for server-side parameter evolution, we can try injecting some special characters, for example, hash. You can also try URL encoding them. Okay, and the error we get here is invalid route, please refer to API documentation. Okay, let's uh, URL encode this and let's see what we get. And we get the same thing. Let's try some other character like question mark to test if there is some parameter that might exist in the backend and it again says invalid route means there isn't okay there is one more thing we can try is the dot dot slash payload so basically this is a path traversal payload that we use to go one directory back so I'm putting this here and I'm going to send this to the server and let's see what's happened. It says invalid route for remove this. Okay. And we get this 200. Okay. So typing administrator like this or like this seems like they both mean the same thing. Let's try to add more characters. Dot dot slash. Okay. And this time we got a different error. It says unexpected response from the API server. And not found. The URL that you requested was not found. One thing we can notice that it keeps saying refer to the API documentation means there is an API documentation. There are ways or multiple ways you can find it. Like for example, performing brute force at this path, then maybe you'll be able to find some. You can try some documentation names that exist by default. For example, API or open API or JSON, something like that. So just try. Open API.json. Maybe we can use hash to truncate the URL. And yeah, it's working. Okay, so this time we can see the open API version and a path API internal version one users and username. Then field. Okay. So we have discovered a new API endpoint. Here we can see a path field and then fields. I guess this placeholder contains parameters because this username is also a parameter value. In this case, it was administrator. So this could be some other parameter value. We have to figure that out. Okay. So how we can find some other parameter names? Like in the last lab, we saw that we could analyze JavaScript files to find those. Okay, so if you have a look at this catch request and scroll down a bit, you can see there is a script SRC tag which contains the path for the JavaScript file, forget password.js. 
So we can just send this to repeater and replace this path with the path we found and send this request. Okay, and we have the JS file content here. We can scroll down a bit and we can analyze this file and there we can see that there is a parameter reset token and there is another endpoint forget password password reset token equals reset token so this endpoint basically takes the reset token and resets the password for a particular user so the parameter we wanted to find is this password reset token okay now we can exploit this url and provide the password reset token in this placeholder to get that token for any user in this case administrator let's try this out i'm gonna remove this part Username is administrator. And then field. Then goes the password reset token. Okay, not this. I'm going to put a hash in the end to truncate the rest of the stuff and send this request. It says invalid route again. Yeah, so there is one extra dot dot slash. We don't need that because there is API internal version one and the rest of the path. Okay, this should work now. And yeah, we got the password reset token for administrator. Now, we can replace the path over here with this path. And we can replace the reset token with this one. And we get a 200 response. we can see that we have been prompted with the new password page so we can just basically show this response in the browser and simply change the password from here so this is how an attacker can exploit server-side parameter pollution in an API endpoint. First, we tried some special characters like we do in normal server-side parameter pollution, like truncating the URL path or finding some parameters. In order to find a parameter, we looked at JS files, then we performed a path traversal payload over here. And by guessing the API documentation, we were able to find this API path. You can also use any word list available on the internet to perform a brute force attack to find the API documentation. But the point is, it was needed to find this hidden path. And then since we found that there is a placeholder over here, which basically takes the parameter name and that parameter was password reset token. We were able to exploit this to get that token. So I hope it made sense. And if you have any question, you can ask it in my Discord server. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.